name is got CJ Plain, and this is the Noise Report. Coming live from the house of fuckery here in Michigan. You know what we do? We laugh, we have fun, we interview cool and interesting people. And uh, this time around, we got these gentlemen, uh, one of whom I've been trying to get on the show for, oh, I don't know, about four and a half damn years now. (laughs) (laughs) But the whole band is with us. This is discrepancies. These guys are out on the road. So uh, we're going to have fun with them. And uh, then we're going to let them get on to what they got going on. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Uh, What's up? How are you guys tonight? Excellent. How about you? I am great, man. I'm uh, gearing up to go have pizza after this. Oh, yeah. One and uh, nice, you know, working on the studio a little bit and nice, build it up and all of that. Turned a walk in closet into a mini recording studio. So, uh, that's pretty cool. That's you get cool. a cool vibe in there, man. Yeah, sick. Yeah, well, you, you know, we got Prince and ACDC, and yeah, you know, of course, Goonies, Goonies over here, and one of my favorite movies. Yeah, so. Um, you guys start by introducing yourself for those who are not familiar with you of uh, who you are and kind of what you do a little bit. We just want to write left. All right. Right from right to left or however it is on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? I'm ATG. I am the rapper, I guess, slash vocalist or I mean, you could just say rapper of discrepancies <laughs> and. Oh, I thought so, you. Yeah. I thought you were going to introduce no, no. me, man. No, I'm going to introduce everybody. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> no, I'm Brandon. I uh, play guitar. I do a little vocals. Uh, I'm Mark. I play drums. I'm Garrett. I play bass. Hold it down. Nice. Um, these guys are from St. Louis, uh, the wonderful city that will be an amazing city if they ever finish building it. <laughs> um, this is coming from someone who used to live in popular bluff missouri for about seven oh. years um i was stationed at fort lost in the woods for a while with the national guard so um i make a joke about st louis because no matter how many times you drive through it there's always construction going on somewhere oh, so. always. <laughs> it's, it's a constant work in progress yeah, I always make I always make the joke. It'll be an amazing city if they ever finish building it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought with that. Um, you guys have a new EP called Product yeah. of Entertainment. So, um, this gentleman right here, I pretty much already know the answer to this, but. Some of the influences you guys have for this music, because you guys have a pretty eclectic, I guess, plate of music that you draw from. Um, So kind of give people a background, I guess, not a background, but an idea of some of the influences you bring in. Um, I already know what you're going to say. So. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> go from left to right this time. Yeah, from yeah. Very- you, you can skip the Eminem one because we don't talk about him on this show. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, like it, we've gone other. back and forth about the Eminem thing, so um, yeah. I, I respect him, but I just I'm not a fan. Like I don't connect to his stuff. Um, but Royce, on the other hand, Royce is like one of my all-time faves so um you know respect where respect is due but just not my thing personally um but anyways your influences <laughs> maybe like uh lincoln park for sure you know um yeah lincoln park for sure we <laughs> <laughs> have a ton I mean, I'd say, like you said, ACDC earlier, that's one of mine. I got a lot of classic rock influences, Guns N' Roses, Metallica, um, modern stuff, I would say, metal core stuff. Like, I love Kill Switch Engage. I love uh, Bullet for My Valentine. Even some of the newer guys. I love Polaris. Um, I got a bunch of them. Like, my, I got hip-hop influences. I got R&B influences. I got rock, metal, and yeah. sometimes country. So, I'm all over the place. Yeah. Um, I've got a lot of like 
I'd say punk rock influences. I like a lot of hard rock too. Um, especially like hip hop. I love that. Um, I, I love like pop music, you know, like super catchy stuff. Like it just, I love it all. And I take like inspiration from, from every area a little bit here and there. So what Mark means to say is MGK. I was, I was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Harry, <laughs> Amber Levine. <laughs> you know, you know what? I don't hate MGK truthfully. Like, I like his music. That is not my favorite thing, but I am a massive Youngblood fan. So mm, the fact yeah. that he was with Youngblood kind of gained him a few points in my book. Because do you think that like set him to the the pop punk? Because that was like they they did that song together, and then ever since then it was like okay. You know, Youngblood was one of the people that I didn't want to like him. Like, I just, yeah. I guess the pop element, I was like, I really don't. But the kid is just built to be a goddamn rock star, man. Like, um, my stepdaughter, before I got divorced, we took her to see Youngblood. That was her first concert. And it was such a phenomenal show, man. Like, it did awesome. just two and a half hours of nonstop moving for a dude who has asthma. He didn't stop one time for two and a half hours. And it was just insane. And I was just like, I can't help but like him, man. Like, he just. Yeah. He, Sometimes those artists come up, the ones that you like, yeah. don't want to like at first. I, one of those for me. How do you feel about uh, Yellow Wolf? I love Yellow Wolf, other than the whole <laughs> thing back and forth with Royce, man. I with mean, Royce, yeah. I was, I was kind of mm -hmm. interested. That's what I was, that was going to be my next thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. like he was one of those. I think Gary said the same thing. It's like his voice kind of like threw me for a loop at first. I was yeah. like, I don't think I dig this, man. But you get past that, man. Dude's got bars, yeah. man. He's yeah, yeah. Yellow Wolf, when he first come out with like trunk music, it was yeah. really different. And it his was always so. different. And it took a minute to kind of get, I guess, orientated to that. But yeah. Southern rap was kind of like that for me overall, really. Like, I was in Little Rock at the time that kind of broke. Mm -hmm. I was around it, and it took a while for me to, like, Little White and 3-6 and those guys, it took me a while to kind of get the, I guess, the vibe of what mm -hmm. they were going for, because I was just kind of like, even Luda, when Luda first came out, I was kind of like, I don't know if I like it. And they overplayed that song with Shauna so much that I was mm. just kind of like, God, I'm so sick of hearing that. And what's oh, uh, um, when I move, you move. Ooh. Yeah, no, the what's yeah. your fantasy? Oh, what's fantasy. Your fantasy? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But after dude, that, yeah. I kind of got the vibe of it, and then I was like, okay, this is cool. It's a very different. Um, so some things don't hit me right away. Blue October. Like my one of my favorite bands, and probably for the first five years, I hated Blue October. Like I just, I thought it was the most horrible sounding thing I'd ever heard because I just, I wasn't right in the the mind space of, of what it was supposed to be. And my yeah. friend just kept telling me, "You got to listen to it. You got to listen to it." And I was like, "God, fucking horrible!" And I was <laughs> laying in bed one night, just vibing, and it come on, and I was like. Man, this is bad as shit, man. And it was like, yeah, I loved him every set, you know. But some shit, you just got to be in that mind space to, yeah. I guess, get the vibe of what they do, and you got to get the right time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Another one at you, real quick. I know this is we're interviewing you, man. <laughs> <laughs> not, the first, not the first time it happened. <laughs> How do you feel about me and? Well, I don't know if you. All right, let me see. What's his name? What's his name? Uh, little baby. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an acquired Baby's, taste for me. I'm in. No. Yeah, baby's okay. Like, I don't dislike baby, but I wouldn't say he's someone I would intentionally listen to. I'm um, gonna send you a couple tracks, man. Yeah, yeah cause I was like, the same way. I didn't like him at all. At all. You know and the one I get the, the the most trouble for. Ooh. I love his lyricism. I think he's absolutely probably top five. I just don't like his voice. I get it. That's Kendrick. Oh, oh man. I, I love it. 
I love Kendrick's lyricism. I love his rhyme schemes, but his voice just after about seven or eight songs, I'm just like, God, I can't listen to that goddamn voice. That was me at like, first too. Like I just I'm a okay, baby do it. Kid. Yeah. Little Wayne's the same kind of way. Like I after so many songs of Little Wayne and Boosie's another one. I love Boosie, but after like eight to ten songs of Boosie, I'm just like, can't take that voice, man. Like that yeah. voice is just it is. It's know. it's weird, but I I love it. I, <laughs> I love, love it. I do too. I love it yeah. a lot. Like I re I respect the shit out of Kendrick. Don't get me wrong. Like I, his lyricism is absolutely top notch, and I put him up there with KSR and and those guys and people who know me know like there's nobody above KSR one for me. Like that's you know that's the supreme master. So um, you can debate it all day long, but. <laughs> There's Man, no I'm KRS. 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 Are you saying KRS? KRS I won. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I was the like, I've never heard of KRS. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, KRS won. Yeah. Boogie Down I Productions, did... whatever. Oh, yeah. I just got to see him live last year. Uh, he oh. performed down at the Flood Wall in St. Louis for Paint Louis. So Dude, dope. Just... Yeah, like 60 years old, man. And still. Yeah. Schooling. Yeah. And I ended up There's leaving like, before the end of his set like an idiot. And he gets, and I heard, and I saw online later, he got down in the crowd and started freestyling with the rappers in the crowd. Yeah. What? You, yeah, mess, you messed I would, up. I would, I would, I, and I wouldn't, I would totally to believe that. Show. Like, he's, you know, Jelly Roll is another yep. one. I promoted a show with Jelly Roll in 2004 at Little Rock. Jelly Roll, Haystack, David Ray. Been telling people about Jelly since 2004, and everybody's like, oh, he's just some fat dude from Nashville. Just some fat dude from Nashville. Now everybody's like, Jelly this, Jelly that. And I'm like, been telling you since therapeutic music, too. <laughs> like, <that's laughs> crazy. Know, whiskey, like, weed, yeah. waffle house. He's, like, he's been around for a long time. Yeah, I mean, awesome. oh, yeah, like shit. CWB, Haystack, Alexander King, Smo, um, David Ray, Struggle, all of them guys were back in the early 2000s. Shit, Jelly was 300 pounds, had braids to his waist and shit, had dreadlocks and shit. Whoa. You know? Wow. Yeah. Jelly's, he's a bad, and he's one of the realest people you'll ever meet. Like, yeah. there's no false pretense of this dude whatsoever. Like he does just he's just him. And you either accept it and love it or you kiss his ass. Like he doesn't give a shit. Like he just <laughs> you know. Um so the tour you guys are doing, you guys are on right now with uh with Awake at Last and Red Star, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. It's Red Star, that's Damien and them guys, right? That's yes. right. Damien, right. Yeah. Uh I worked with him. Uh, you guys are going to be in Detroit in I think two days. I think so. I think yes, it's two days. Are. Yeah, you're going to be at the Token. Um, yeah, never been there. How is it? Token is amazing. John is one of the absolute best owners. Um, uh, next to Kevin's Inc. at the Machine Shop, probably the best venue owner that I know. Um, wow. Token is amazing. They just updated everything. Brand new sound system. Brand new stage. Um, so you guys should have an amazing show there. Um, that's all awesome. machine shop is still the best. Uh, if you ever get to play there, you'll understand. Like, sure, it's the top of the heat for anywhere. I I don't care what anyone says, like, <laughs> you know, put it in, like, an, put it in Antonio's terms. Kevin Zink is like the Eminem of venue owners, okay? Like, <laughs> seriously, like, the dude is he's incredible. I mean, the machine shop is the best in the world, period. And that's oh, yeah. why they say world famous, you know, like he's earned that title. Um, that's awesome. Then you guys are going to be uh, awake at last. No, I'm sorry. Until I wake it versus me. Um, yeah. <laughs> which is where I'm going to get to see you guys because you're going to be in Lansing, which is right down the road from where I live. Nice. Oh, nice. So I finally get to see you guys live. Um. That'd be a really good show. Yeah, I'm yeah, pumped. It'll next month. Um, it'll be a good week because they get to see you on the seventh, and then on the eleventh, I'm coming back down to Detroit to see Dream Theater, Animals as Leaders, and Devin Fucking Townsend. 
Oh, nice. Wow, nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, what a lineup. I've I've wanted to see Devin since like he played with Vi on Sex and Religion, and I've never got to see Devin. He's never been in America anywhere near me. And um my buddy Planky never misses Dream Theater. So he's like, hey, you want to go see Dream Theater? And I was kind of like, I don't know. And he's like, Devin Townsend's opening. And I was like, book it. (laughs) 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 Don't give me me shit about Dream Theater, but I'm not missing Devin. Um, That's awesome. I kind of want to see Animal as Leaders, too, because those guys are fucking gnarly. It's Tosin, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Javier. Yeah, I mean that's that's a killer three band lineup right there, man. They're just that's a really good lineup. Um, so tell us some adventures you've had on the road, like some funny stories or um, oh, sh- shitty stories or. Um, See, we can't tell you too much because Antonio and I have actually been writing a script for a stoner movie where <laughs> it, where these guys just nice. go on to work. And they're just in a band. It's going to be all of the crazy stuff that happens to us on tour, but it's all going to happen in one tour for these people. It's coming think, out our movie. Harold the Kumar Castle, but nice. as a touring band. Yeah, <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're cool. You're cool. You're cool. <laughs> we're thinking about like having, like, if we're going to do this movie, like, we're not going to act in it, but we were trying to figure out what actors would be us. And I was like, I want Craig Robinson to play me. <laughs> and he's going to yeah. be like significantly older than everybody else in the band. <laughs> like, yeah. But I'm, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd say Cedric the Entertainer, but he's significantly older. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> funny too. That would be funny too. Um, so Eddie, yeah, Eddie Griffin doesn't too? quite have the build for it. Yeah, right. Eddie Griffin is coming to St. Louis soon. I saw. I love Eddie. I saw Eddie live about six years ago, and oh, that's oh, awesome! Funniest yeah. motherfucker. Like I love Eddie, man. Like Eddie is Eddie. hilarious. Yeah, you know, it's a funny thing. One of my favorite roles he's done isn't even a comedy. It's the movie with Steven Seagal, the Urban Legend or the Urban. Oh, I need to see uh, this. Urban. I... Legend. I feel like I've Steven seen Steven Seagal movies yeah. are so an absolute cool. treat to watch. <laughs> he plays he plays basically the gang leader. Uh that oh, uh, okay. is against Seagal's character. But he's like three quarters of the movie, he's like hard ass to all his guys, but then at the same time he's still making like wise cracks and being Eddie, you know. Yeah. And at the end of the movie, when they actually come together. The ending is just completely different than what you expect. Like it's totally mm-hmm. petty, but it completely defies what Seagal is about. But it's a great ending. Like it ends. Really oh, I need well. to watch. We got it. What's the name of this movie? Uh it's Urban. Fuck. Urban. Urban. Uh, Ur- Urban. I'm a good bro. You got to watch the Glimmer Man. The Glimmer Man with Steven Seagal and, and Keenan uh, Ivory. Keenan Yes, this yeah. movie is the most ridiculous. <laughs> it's not even a comedy, but it is the funniest movie I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I've seen Seagal. every Seagal movie. Uh, I, I'm an action movie fanatic. Like, if it's I love an action. action movie, karate movie, um, like, and the more violent, Urban the better. Justice. Um, Urban we're Justice. watching that. Yeah, we're gonna watch yeah. Urban. It's called Urban Justice. I'm watching Urban that. Justice. <laughs> that's it. Um, we were yeah, just it's... talking about uh Tim and Deuce Bigelow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um okay. the raid the raid and the raid two are like um some of my favorites and the night comes for us, which is by the same guy. Like three of the most violent martial art movies you'll ever see. Like almost slasher movie level martial arts type shit, man. Like it's with is Seagal or just somebody No, else? it's it's got Eco Uas, basically. You know? mm. And uh, Joe Taslim, uh, the one who was in um, Mortal Kombat. Oh, but, uh, they're they're movies from Thailand, but they're ultra violent, man. Like, I think in the Ray Two, I think there's like two hundred and two hundred thirty seven kills or something in like one hundred and ten minutes. Didn't Mike Shinoda do something for that movie? It wasn't Mike Shinoda associated? With I think. I think he's doing something with the American because they're redoing it the American way. Okay, it means basically they're gonna fuck it up because 
Yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll just dumb it down, basically. and Right. Um, it's supposed to have Frank Grillo or some shit in it, which is completely asinine because he's not even a martial artist. And, <laughs> like, oh, boy. Off to a bad like, start. Yeah, like, how the fuck are you going to replace Eco Uas with fucking Frank Grillo? Like, <laughs> you know, that's like, no. you know, that's like replacing Sylvester Stallone with Ryan Felipe. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Steven Seagal, did you hear that story about him sh- shitting himself after getting put in a hole? I've heard a few <laughs> stories about him and Van Damme. And, <laughs> um, have, you, have you heard about him on SNL? I know Van Damme got his ass kicked by uh, Chuck Zito. And um, because Chuck Zito is, you know, he's one of those guys you see in all the Italian films, but he's a real life badass. And apparently something happened in the club or something. And he tried to kick at Chuck's face or something. And Chuck just basically knocked him out with one punch. And the shit went sideways from there. And um, because Zito's a big dude too. Like, you know, he was in Oz and fucking the Sopranos and all of that. So he's a big stocky dude and um yeah. but he's he's like Danny Trejo. Like, you know, he's a real super nice guy. But he's a real life fucking gangster. Like he's not one of them dudes <laughs> you just fuck with. And apparently Van Damme didn't know that and fucked around and found Christ. out. Like, like, yeah. like he fucked around and found out. Like <laughs> fucked around and found out. <laughs> um yeah. where do they find you guys on social media? Where do they find this record other than obviously the streaming places um you know where do they find like physical stuff t-shirts uh hats merch swag uh all that kind of fun you have <laughs> yeah. our website is discrepanciesmusic.com and from there you can basically get to all the socials um if you want physical copies of the record uh in vogue records.com then then our stuff should be right on the front page should be easy to find if it's not easy to find let us know we'll send you a link we'll make it easy but yeah uh everything's on our website and if you want some of the best merch which is not on our website we keep that stuff only live so you should come it's see the band the best way to get it is at a show that's right yeah. Yeah. so come to a show and we'll hook so you we're gonna we're do more- and handling yeah they, 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 yep well maybe handling we're gonna we're gonna travel to Lansing to get one because uh this here ice cube shirt is getting a little oh, red oh, nice. oh. um <laughs> ice cube is one of my influences man yeah. I know we skipped my influences because you. you ain't want to talk about Eminem but <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm kind of disappointed man because you got like Ice Cube, Cypress Hill, and um, a third, uh, not E40. Um, Tech Nine. Tech Nine. Twista. They oh, have, and then they took garbage ass Millies out with them. And I'm like, mm. really? Of everyone in hip hop, you took Millies? Like, yeah. I just. I'm telling you, they need to redo the Up and Smoke tour. They need uh, something. West Side yeah. Connection, uh, like West freaking Side connection dude. with uh with Dr. Dre and like yep. oh, and for Eminem and Snoop Dogg and Exhibit. Mm. And, yeah. Man, I miss on, Exhibit, man. Dude. I miss Exhibit, man. Yeah. So man. Let me ask you. Let me ask you, Antonio. I love Exhibit. If you could put three hip hop artists together for a record. Either as a group or just a one-off, whatever. If you could kind of create your, I guess, super group, who would it be? Oh man, that's so hard. So, like, is this just for one song or just for like a, a for like a record for like a record, record or an EP? Who would I want to hear on an EP? Let's man, this is tough. This is tough, but I'm gonna pull some. I'm gonna pull it out of my head. Um, <laughs> you know who I would want to? I want to hear. I want to hear Hobson do a song with Eminem. So I think it would be cool if they cool. get a project together. But I'm trying to think of a third person to put in there. Who did, who did Eminem just do? Uh, 
he did join the Lucas. He did. Uh, who did he just do? Moon Man, Moon Man or something? Who, uh, Kid Cudi. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't know if I put a kid in there with them though. That's man. This is tough. That's a tough question. Yeah. <laughs> like, because like I wanted like my favorite probably group of all time is like Slaughterhouse as far as like a rap group. Mm-hmm. Um, you need somebody, but you need somebody that's kind of to make it's, a hook. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was literally yeah. Saying, you need a hook guy. <laughs> I, I think Hopson is pretty good with hooks though. He's, He's a good I, but do you want a singer? Do you want a singer or do you want to? Mm, God, that's what makes it hard, <laughs> man. Uh, this is tough. I kind of want to add somebody to Method Man and Red Man, like add a third person to, to them. That would be crazy. Um, Hobson, Eminem, who's the hook guy? Wu Tang Clan, the whole clan. <laughs> the whole clan. <laughs> Thirty-seven hooks on a song. <laughs> No, we were discussing it earlier. That's why I asked, and yeah, everyone had their favorites, and I kind of came off the cuff because I was like, "There's three people that they're very different from each other, but I think the three of them together would make both a super serious, but also a super hilarious record." Oh, I want to yeah. see. I want to see Method Man, Ice Cube, and Nems. Okay. Nems. Like, Nems. yeah, because because Nems is Nems is just fucking disrespectful on everything. Like, yeah. a dude is just nuts, and but he can rap. Like, you know, he's an absolute beast. And then I think Method and Cube together would just, you know, that kind of West Coast East Coast thing would thing, and then you'd have Nems in there just kind of stirring the pot with what he does, you know, just kind yeah, of being yeah. respectful, like. The Bing Bong and fuck your life and Bing Bong, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, don't ever disrespect me and that type of shit that he does. Like yeah. that's that's what makes them great to me is like he just he doesn't give a shit, you know. It's, and I kind of want to throw. All right, I'm going to throw Hobson, Token, and Jordan Lucas. Mm, I want to hear that. That project. would be a oh yeah. That would be a rapidy rap ass yeah, album. That's for a rapidy. <laughs> Or or Hobson, Hobson Token and Chris Webby would be a okay oh. crazy crazy one too. I'm gonna throw Lil Dicky somewhere. Well, you gotta put Lil Dicky somewhere. Dickie, Lil yeah. Dickie, I love Lil Dicky. Yeah. Dicky is I like Dicky. Like you know yeah. for what he's he does, a, I guess. Like he's yeah, a, he's got his own thing. Going. He's goofy as yeah, hell, like, but he can rap. He can rap. Real. That yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Like I, Dicky's kind of hard to of the thing because obviously you know the dude can rap but he hasn't really done anything concrete I guess to really base it on like he hasn't done like a serious record per se yeah, but... the Brandon Yuri record I thought was crazy mm, that one that's a good song yeah I guess okay. I, haven't, I haven't heard that one so what is oh. it? I know who Brandon is obviously but I didn't know him and Dickie did a song together Yes. Molly? Molly. Molly, that's it. It's yeah. called Molly. Yep. Yeah. yeah, check that out, man. It's crazy. It's really good. Let me write that down. Uh, Molly with yep. Dickie. Br- Brandon Yuri and Lil Dicky. Lil Dicky's got more than just rapping. He's got like a whole visionary thing going on because the show yeah, is so like- good. Is really good, and then all his music videos are literally like the song and the music video. They have to be viewed together. You know what that's I mean? what I'm it's saying. Not- like, you know, that's what I love about NF is somebody that I, I I've gotten into a lot lately. I like him a lot. Yeah. As much as I like his rapping, what really blows my mind about NF is his visuals, his videos, and the way he connects them together. Yeah. And shit, that like that's just a different level to me. Like, yeah, you got to think on a different level to have that continuity from one to the next man and you know like it's just so much more than just walking in and and writing a song and putting it together when you add that visual to it like you know and yeah. Hobson's been real good about that like just kind of having that continuity from one to the next and we're like with the story of his son and all of that having that 
Yeah. I feel like he's slept on, man. I feel like he's slept on extremely. Oh, yeah. 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 That, that's still the, the line he did about uh, Kanye and Kendrick, you know, that's still one of the funniest lines ever to me, you know, like setting the bar low. And he's like, you know, Kendrick, oh, yeah. like four, four foot five or something. However he says it. Um, I have a brain injury, so I have a hard time like remembering lyrics, unfortunately. But um, oh, you're all good, man. I can't remember there's lyrics. There's a lot of lyrics. <laughs> I uh, I had a half inch chain leave this beautiful scar down the middle of my head. Um, oh man! But, yeah, I was I was a truck driver for 16 years, and half inch chain snapped and hit me right across the forehead and left this beautiful. <laughs> a reminder of oh, dang. Of, well, that's uh, your, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, I know you guys are on the road, so I won't keep you uh longer. This is discrepancy. They are tonight they're you're in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, right? Yes, yes we are. Yeah, PA, I'm sorry. Um <laughs> <laughs> no no one should ever be forced to have to endure Pennsylvania. Um, I only say that because I got arrested for not returning a library book in Pennsylvania. So Pennsylvania. Oh, what? what? Yeah. Serious about their books, right? True, true to life. For those of you that have not heard the story, I lived in Meadville, Pennsylvania, and they sent two detectives to my door to arrest me for not returning library material because in Meadville, Pennsylvania. If your books are more than 30 days overdue, it is theft of city property. Oh, and it is a misdemeanor. That and is ridiculous. When I laughed at the detectives, they were not amused. Why are you laughing at us? <laughs> Why would I not? You yeah, put like, me to jail for a library book. <laughs> I don't know, McGruff. I thought you might have more serious shit to do other than chase people down for a Jimmy Buffett CD and a Dean Koontz book, you know, but <laughs> obviously you fuckers are bored and need a fucking hobby, but you know, yeah, I went to court and I laughed about it with the judge too because I'm just going to plead guilty, you know, fuck it. What is it? $20 worth of shit. What are you going to do? Give me a fine? No, yeah. six months of probation, 80 hours of community service, and fourteen hundred <laughs> court costs. <laughs> so, God. 20 years later, <laughs> fuck Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, my God. That is ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> I'll never buy a book here. That's where I got the information. Yeah, don't, don't, don't check any books out in Meadville, Pennsylvania. Um, anyway, guys, have an amazing tour. Be safe, please. Uh, and we will see you either possibly in a few days in Detroit at the Token, or if I don't make that one, uh, we will see you in Lansing uh, at, uh, I don't even remember the, whatever is open in Lansing anymore, because it's, <laughs> it's, Lansing changes so much, like one minute it's max, and then it's this and this and this, and, you know, it used to be the Hayloft, and I don't even know what the fuck it is now, so... Uh, Wherever it is, I'll find it, and we'll see you guys there. Uh, but in the meantime, this is Discrepancies. Check out their new record. Uh, it's called A Product of Entertainment. It's what? It's a five-song EP, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Bump it. Yes. Play it loud. Uh, you know what? <laughs> we'll um, as always, be well. Treat each other with kindness, and remember that music heals. Definitely. <laughs>